Mark, in, in churches that are often facing headwinds, we read a lot of folks who exhort us to be missional churches. That's what's necessary in these times and for these churches. Or we have folks telling us that leadership needs to be entrepreneurial, that leadership of churches now cannot simply sit back and wait for mm -hmm. folks to come because they're good covenantal Christians. We have to be entrepreneurial leaders. And, and I have heard you put these two words together in what you, uh, you refer to as missional entrepreneurship. What do you mean by that? How do these two words come together? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'd like to begin with the context of uh, the story of Joseph interpreting Pharaoh's dream. Remember the story of the fat cows and the skinny cows, and uh, Pharaoh has this dream, and he calls in Joseph to interpret the dream. Remember, Joseph is just sort of thrust into this thing. It's not like he goes looking for it. But uh, Joseph interprets the dream that there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. And... Uh, he is invited into uh, um, proposing a solution given the fact that there's a famine coming. And so his solution is, we got a real opportunity in these seven years of plenty. And if we, if we plan well and we, um, we are intentional about uh, the abundance during this season, we can actually change the course of history and uh, save many nations from starvation. Well, um, as you know the story, that, that actually happened, and uh, that's how the uh, Israelites made it down to Egypt. And, um, well, I, I'm playing with this whole metaphor that the church is likely heading for, headed for a season of famine. Um, as I think about the giving patterns of our, of our children, though they are generous, uh, they tend to be much less institutionally generous and much more causally driven. Um, so they will, they will give and perhaps give a, as high a percentage as the generations before, but they will not give a, as easily to uh, 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 an operations budget in a church, uh, the kinds of things that fund youth ministry. <laughs> um, <coughs> they will tend to they will tend to give to uh, things that they're passionate about. And so um, as, we, as we think about the next chapter of the church, what is the possibility that we are now in a season of plenty and that we are heading into a season of famine? And uh, I'd, I'd just like to say that if I'm wrong, I'd be happy for the church to have too much money. But let's just play with the possibility that that's where we're heading. The way the church usually works, we will wake up in 30 years and say, wonder how that happened. I'm so surprised. But I think most people generally agree that's where we're headed. If we know that's where we're headed, I'm just raising the question, are there ways that we could rethink the economics of ministry before it becomes a crisis? I've got a few ideas around that. One is, um, I love the idea of creating a fund driven by people in youth ministry who say, I could give a dollar a week for the rest of my life to this fund. Yeah, you got 300,000 or so youth ministers in the world. Let's say 100,000 of those every year gives 50 bucks. Well, pretty soon we grow a fund uh, uh, in the tens of millions that is able to resource, resource ministry because somebody's thinking ahead. Um, we also like the idea of youth pastors um, early in their career. I'm just, I'm just provoking this idea. What would happen if youth pastors earlier in their career, so let's just say they're in seminary, they, they commit to spending five hours a week developing a sustainable business that it doesn't produce much income in the first few years, but they're investing their time, investing their time, so that 10 years from now, that business is able to fund their ministry habit. Um, we're working, we've, we've called this little thing the Joseph Project, and our hope is to help uh, youth pastors do that, those that want to try to do that. Um, we're, uh, we're excited about uh, sort of inviting the church into thinking 20 years ahead 
rather than 20 years late. I, I graduated from seminary in 1986, fully prepared to do ministry in the church of 1966. And uh, I think we can do it differently. And, um, but I think it will take a, a recalibration of the way we think about the education of youth pastors. Is it possible that we're getting better and better at training youth pastors for positions that won't exist 20 or 30 years from now? that we've got these master's programs, we've got these, uh, we've got these even doctoral programs in, in youth ministry, lots of now undergrad programs in youth ministry. What if those positions are going away in terms of the full-time uh, benefited youth ministry position? In fact, Group, Group Magazine does a survey of, of uh, salaries of youth ministers. They've been doing this 20 or 30 years. And um, all through the recession, the 2008 to 2011 or so, uh, the salaries of youth pastors were creeping up, creeping up. Even through the recession, they were getting higher and higher. This past, the, the past results, the, the salary numbers are lower than any time in the last 12 or 15 years. And the number of part-time youth workers is more than tripled. Hmm. And it, we're just seeing this trend, it's just a tip of the iceberg, but I think we can get ahead of that. And if we can, uh, we could actually change the course of the church's history. 